guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel, I'm a third year biomedical science and pre-med student, and today I'm gonna to be sharing my key tips for each of the sections of the MCAP. This will be the fourth video in my MCAP prep playlist, so if you haven't seen the first three videos, I highly encourage you to go check them out before jumping into this one. In this video, I'll be covering the chem phys, bio, and psych -so section. Due to the high volume of information, I'm gonna be covering the car section in a separate video, so stay tuned for that one. I'll be reading off the tips from my MCAT important sections adjustment doc that I created while I was studying for the MCAT. I'll leave a link to the doc in the description below as well as timestamps if you want to jump to a specific section in the video. Now let's jump right into it. Starting off is the chem phys section. Now this section is super important because it is the first section of the MCAT exam so you need to make sure that you're going into the test center focused, calm, and concentrated and making sure you're starting off your testing strong. The last thing you want to do is go in rushed and not focused and start reading passages and flagging a bunch of questions. If you go in flagging questions left and right it's going to make you panicked and set the stage for a really rocky testing experience. It's important that you concentrate, immerse yourself in the test taking environment, make sure that you're starting off the first passage strong. It's be easy to start thinking really complex when approaching mathematical concepts, but it's also important to remember that the MCAT is focusing on really large big picture relationships. They're not going to be testing you on nitty gritty details, but instead looking to see if you grasp these key high yield concepts. The question is often focusing on fundamental scientific concepts that they've highlighted in review books as well as their content outline. So make sure to look for those before analyzing anything else first. Another thing to know about the chem phys section is to use diagrams to your advantage. Diagrams are really useful ways for the test makers to analyze your critical thinking skills in relation to the passage. Once again, with diagrams, make sure you're referring to the right diagram before answering a question. Answer based on the given info, as once again, the MCAT is passage based. So all these questions are gonna be coming from evidence and elements from diagrams that they offer in the passage. Not having a calculator can actually work to your advantage on the MCAT, as test makers can't ask specific questions that are gonna come with answer choices specific to very tiny decimal points. Make sure to use rounding to your advantage and be comfortable with scientific notation and manipulate scientific notations. A common example is the acceleration for gravity. The specific value is 9.8 meters per second squared. Since you don't have a calculator on the MCAT, make sure to use these instances for rounding, such as using the value 10 meters per second squared, keeping in mind that the answer choice will be slightly less since you rounded down. Another key takeaway for the chem phys section is to use equations to your advantage. Equations are literally illustrating mathematical relationships in an abbreviated form. A lot of the high yield equations are based off of high yield mathematical relationships, such as the gas law, which in equation form represents a relationship between different variables like temperature, pressure, and volume. The MCAT will most likely be interested in how you can manipulate variables in these equations in order to get a certain answer. Make sure that you memorize these high yield equations and that you're comfortable with what each of the variables in the equations represent, as these are most likely important factors that go into the mathematical relationships and foundational principles that the test makers want you to know. This last tip applies to all of the sections. Make sure that you're reading the questions carefully and that you're not skimming and reading too fast, that you're missing out on points and questions that you can answer correctly. Double check to make sure you're looking at the right diagram. Make sure you're looking for question distractors, such as not, accept, and least. After the chem phys and car section, you'll come across the bio and biochem section. Now this section is following lunch, so make sure that you're taking the appropriate time during your breaks to reset your brain and not linger on any of the questions from the previous sections. Make sure that you're starting each of these sections with a strong, clear, and concentrated mindset. Don't let worries from previous sections distract you. You can't go back and you need to save your energy for focusing on upcoming questions. As with other sections, make sure that you're not reading too fast or misinterpreting the question or making any hasty answer selections. For these passages, much like other passages, it's really important that you're staying fully concentrated when you're reading them. In these passages, a lot of the terms and concepts will build off of each other. So you need to make sure you're concentrated the whole way through to fully absorb the whole pathway or concept they're trying to get across. If highlighting helps you, make sure that you're highlighting key enzymes reagents and proteins in these reaction pathways and experiments. Make sure you're not highlighting every single sentence that you come across as this will likely drain on your time and not be helpful in referring back to the passage. A lot of the topics in the bio and biochem section are topics with novel information that's going to require you to draw on previous knowledge and concepts to answer these questions. Whenever you're dealing with any unfamiliar information or information that you don't know, process elimination is key. Analyze the accuracy of the answer choices. The AMC loves to throw in answer choices that sound correct, but if read carefully, are actually not true. They might include buzzwords or facts that seem familiar or you've stumbled across during your MCAT prep. 
prep, but with a slight twist that makes it incorrect. So eliminate answer choices that are scientifically correct, but don't answer the question. They may choose an answer choice that is factually correct, but is completely irrelevant to the question and something they suspect you might select just out of familiarity. Similar to this, don't make the mistake of choosing distractors that are not supported by the passage. Once again, the MCAT is passage-based, so make sure that you're selecting answer choices that are supported by evidence in the passage and not extreme extrapolations that you think may be correct. The AMC also loves to throw novel information in their answer choices to trick students. Some of these answer choices are expected for students not to know, so make sure to use process of elimination to your advantage. That being said, if you don't know if something is true or not, use process of elimination as well as your prior knowledge to eliminate any answer choices that you know for a fact are not factually correct or any answer choices that seem correct but don't answer the question. And on to the last section of the MCAT, the psych so section. It's really important that you use all of your energy to power through as this is the last section, but it still represents a fourth of your exam. Make sure that you're providing the appropriate energy and you're staying focused. I know at this point you're gonna be exhausted, but make sure to remind yourself that this is the last section and you're almost there. The psych so section is also known as one of the easier sections, so it's nice to have at the end, but also make sure that you're not getting complacent and you're still devoting as much energy as necessary to finish off strong. One of the biggest things to know about the psych so section is that it is heavily based on vocab. If you've thoroughly studied and really well understand the terms from this section, then you should be good to go. Since this section is heavily based on a lot of vocab, it's important to answer these questions based on the scientific definition and not any other conflicting definitions that they may try to throw in to trip you up. A lot of missed questions come from misinterpreting the vocab, so make sure that you're answering based on these scientific definitions. In the psych social section, as with other sections, you can use process of elimination to your advantage. Make sure to keep in mind the importance of vocab when you're eliminating answer choices. Use process of elimination for terms that you don't know. Make sure you're choosing terms that you're familiar with and that are related to the concept that's being asked in the question. AMC likes to throw in distractor answer choices that sound like real theories and concepts but are actually made up. Make sure that you're using process of elimination to your advantage and selecting answer choices based on the well-known scientific definitions. Another thing that may help with process of elimination is identifying what term or core concept that the test maker is intending an incorrect answer to address. They might pick an answer choice that's from the same subject as the question being asked, but with the wrong term or concept associated with it. Make sure that you're not falling into these traps and picking answer choices that are relevant as well as based off of the vocab, evidence, and information from the passage. Another key tip that can apply to all other sections as well is to go with your gut. It's often hard, but make sure to ignore or chase out distracting or extraneous thoughts such as what would other people pick? What is the popular answer? What if this new factor was introduced? Remember, the MCAT is passage-based, so make sure to answer what is being asked in the question or the passage and not introduce any extraneous or outside information that's irrelevant to the question. Further on this point, make sure that you're not incorporating any extraneous outside knowledge or perceived popular opinions. Just focus on what's being asked in the question and the high yield terms and foundational concepts that appear in the passage. And that's a wrap for this video today. Stay tuned for my video on my key tips for the car section of the MCAT. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the MCAT knowledge with anyone else who may be preparing for the MCAT. Good luck in your studies, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!